Hello everyone and welcome to this virtual optical show session titled Coherent Communications Measurement Challenges brought to you by Quantify Photonics. My name is Sung Hoon M. I am Director of Technical Sales at Quantify Photonics. For those of you who know us uh, as Coherent Solutions, Quantify Photonics is our new name that uh, we introduced in September 2020. In this session, a quick overview on coherent communications market trend will be presented, followed by introduction to the new standards 400G ZR and ZR+. Then we'll have a look at some of the measurement challenges involved with trying to measure a coherently modulated signal. We'll then have a look at a specific application example, uh, in this case, a coherent DWDM systems test challenges and requirements. Uh, and that will be followed by a presentation of uh, commercially available test instrumentation system that can solve these challenges. The coherent communication technology has been traditionally used for long haul fiber optic links, thanks to its high data rate per fiber and scalability. Also, uh, since the use of DSP is essential for coherent communications technology, dispersion compensation comes included, which makes it suitable for long distance transmission. One of the hot topics today in the industry is regarding the exponential growth in demand and traffic between data centers and within data centers. Machine learning, Internet of Things, video streaming and gaming, they all contribute to this rapid growth. And all this increase in the traffic is driving the industry to adopt a new technology that's capable of scaling up to higher data rate. Uh, traditional non-coherent technologies cannot scale up to higher data rate easily, and it's just not uh, meeting the demand. The coherent technology, on the other hand, allows the data rate to be increased by many multiples of the baud rate through the use of phase and intensity modulation. One disadvantage it had was its high price, but with it being mass produced, and its production price targets coming down to as low as 10 gigabps in the future, uh, it may soon become uh, a very price competitive offering as well. Now let's have a look at the latest standards released by OIF. It's called 400 GZR. And OIF has classified it into two application driven categories. The first category is the amplified DWDM point-to-point -point, uh, application. It's targeted at longer distance, 120 kilometers, um, used for interconnect of data centers. And it uses a 16 QAM modulation format at 60 gigabaud. It can have form factors such as QSFB DD, uh, OSFB and even the bigger CFP formats. Um, and then there's the other application which is more aimed at shorter distance, unamplified, uh, non-tunable fixed wavelength uh, application, which uh, could be a potential for uh, intra data center connectivity. Uh, when the price uh, of the coherent systems comes becomes low enough. In addition to 400 GZR, the industry is also looking into a derivative of it, calling it 400 GZR plus. It has enhanced interoperability of data rates, so it supports uh, working with 100 and 200 G. Uh, systems and its reach is longer at up to 500 kilometers. So that's uh, opening the doors to metro transport uh, link distances. 
400G ZR and ZR plus modules can come in package as small as a QSFP DD and it has 16 QAM DSP and analog coherent optics all in this small module which means now coherent technology for metro transport can be can come at port densities as high as that of data centers this uh, again hinting um, the possibility of a great uptake for coherent technologies now let's have a look at what a coherently modulated signal is and see why it's more difficult to measure than a non-coherently modulated signals intensity modulated signal like nrz gives you one bit per baud so your giga bps data rate is the same as giga baud rate but for coherently modulated signal, you're modulating intensity and phase with finer granularity so that one symbol or baud represents multiples of bits. Now, with this scheme, you can achieve a really high data rate uh, using the same speed of the electronics to uh, generate you know, similar baud rate. Because coherently modulated signals uh, modulate the phase, it cannot be measured directly using an oscilloscope. It has to be mixed with a reference unmodulated laser, also known as a local oscillator. And the data capture has to be uh, done using a real-time oscilloscope, which makes a contiguous signal capture so that your uh, relative phase measurement uh, can be tracked. Also, it needs DSP, digital signal processing, uh, to be performed before a meaningful signal information can be obtained. Uh, to understand why DSP is necessary for the measurement, uh, we can have a look at this diagram to see what happens between the transmitter and receiver uh, of coherent systems. So on the bottom left here, we have the uh, four tributaries of an optical signal on the transmitter side and it as it travels down the optical fiber the polarization rotates randomly and since there's no absolute reference to the phase uh, when you receive the signal on the receiver side uh, the receiver tributaries will contain contributions from a mix of transmitter tributaries and you can see the, the color-coded bars that represent the, the mixture that gets received uh, on the receiver. So the DSP is necessary to uh, untangle and realign the tributaries uh, so that you can have a look at them individually uh, and get the modulated signal from them. Now let's have a look at what happens in the DSP chain. So in the diagram you see here, it shows you what the constellation would look like after each DSP step. So you start from the raw data, which gets the calibration for hardware characteristics, such as S21, receiver channel skew, and any imbalances. Um, you apply chromatic dispersion to it. The signal still doesn't look uh, like any um, uh, constellation. Um, but after you have demultiplexed the polarizations, you start to see uh, some symbols lining up in rings um, and showing, uh, you know, this constellation is rotating because of the frequency offset between the two lasers being mixed. Once that's removed, you see the constellations now stop rotating. And after you've removed the laser phase noise, which uh, causes this uh, rotational uh, smudging, then you have nicely optimized uh, constellation at the end. So an instrument that measures coherent optical signals is known as Optical Modulation Analyzer, or OMA. It is needed because basically you need the coherent equivalent of eye diagram mask test of NRZ signals you see on the uh, bottom left diagram there for non-coherent uh, signals. 
in coherent world, uh, it, it translates to co constellation diagrams and eye diagrams of uh, the tributaries. Also, back-to-back -back transceiver test or self-test is only designed to give simple pass-fail result. So it doesn't provide in-depth diagnostics information that you can get with OMAs. Uh, and as DSP is absolutely necessary for coherent signal measurement, uh, OMA gives you access to the DSP chain and ability to uh, configure it or customize it for troubleshooting. And having a gold standard reference test system will, of course, reduce your R&D and test time. If you were to set up an end-to-end -end coherent communications test bench, it'll look something like this. You'll have the RF signal generator, either a PPG or AWG, driving the IQ transmitter or coherent signal transmitter, um, and the signal is then measured with an OMA system. If we now focus on the OMA uh, instrumentation, you see here the Tektronics Quantify Photonics OMA system consisting of the uh, DPO 70000 SX series real-time oscilloscope, IQRX coherent receiver in the middle, uh, and the OM1106 OM analysis software uh, running on a separate computer connected to the hardware by Ethernet uh, remote connectivity. The oscilloscope here is uh, unique in that it's, uh, it's got a modular architecture. So you can have multiple oscilloscopes connected and operated as a single system, giving you, um, you know, choice of number of channels and bandwidth configuration as it suits. So when you're trying to configure an OMA system, a question that gets asked a lot is how much bandwidth do I need to measure a certain signal? Uh, the answer to this question depends on what kind of measurement you're trying to make and also whether you're in the uh, manufacturing test environment or an R&D environment. The diagram on the right shows uh, two pulses of different shape or profile with the same baud rate showing greatly different bandwidth depending on its shape. For manufacturing test environment, the DUT will most likely have a heavily Nyquist filtered profile, like the raised cosine you see down there. And there will be um, beneficial uh, reasons to match the OMA system to that minimal bandwidth and reduce the cost. On the other hand, for R&D applications, it is important that you make high quality signals and high quality measurements. And for an optical modulation analyzer, its purpose is to give you an accurate measurement of the signal without distorting or filtering out its spectral contents. The Quantify Photonics OMA offers up to 70 gigahertz of bandwidth, which is enough to characterize 400 GZR signals today without adding distortion or filtering out spectral content of the signal. The 70 gigahertz bandwidth is also enough to measure tightly Nyquist filtered signals up to 120 gigabaud, future proofing your hardware for the future generation 800G systems. Now the OMA you see here has a uniquely modular architecture. So if you don't need all that bandwidth today, you can start with a lower bandwidth configuration say 33 gigahertz across four channels, uh, as you see on the diagram on the left, uh, which can also operate as two channels at 70 gigahertz to give you ability to measure single polarization at that higher bandwidth. And if you do need the higher bandwidth across four channels in the future, you just need to add two extra oscilloscope modules. And so you are protecting your initial investment uh, while securing the future upgradability uh, with the highest uh, return on investment possible. Now, in terms of the signal quality measurement, 
error vector magnitude or AVM is the parameter that summarizes the signal quality for coherent signal modulation formats. Um, it's, it, it represents how far the measured symbol is from the ideal reference point. And as you can see from the two constellation diagrams here, uh, as you go up in the order of uh, the QAM modulation format, the distance between symbols become closer and closer. And the level of EVM you need to achieve a similar level of bit error rate decreases significantly. This also means that an OMA uh, designed to measure higher order modulation formats needs to have a low EVM noise floor as that spec now becomes very uh, important uh, when trying to measure high density modulation formats. The Quantify Photonics OMA system has been designed to minimize EVM noise floor. There's no trans impedance amplifier used in the coherent receiver, and it is paired with a low noise real time oscilloscope from Tektronix. The hardware construction of the coherent receiver has been carefully shielded and protected to prevent environmental noise and there is minimal optical insertion loss to ensure the sensitivity of the system is high. All this effort results in the industry's lowest, less than 1.3% EVM noise floor spec, which is very important when you're trying to measure higher order modulation formats such as 16 QAM or 64 QAM. Now that we've talked about the hardware side of the OMA, I want to briefly uh, come back to this slide that you saw before on uh, DSP. And this is what a commercially available OMA software looks like. An OMA software provides DSP algorithms um, to help you uh, configure the signal measurement. Um, it'll provide the visualization uh, of constellation diagrams, trajectories, eye diagrams, and spectrum, and provide numerical parameter measurements. There, there are plenty of parameters to uh, show about the coherent signal, starting from obviously the EVM and BER to various bias errors and imbalance. Um, there, yeah, there, there's an extensive list of numerical parameters. Uh, plus, advanced uh, OMA options include customizing the DSP, uh, advanced diagnostics such as the 3D plots and uh, super channel measurement, and DSP that corrects for transmitter impairments. The OM1106 software gives you access to an extensive list of DSP algorithms that you can choose from. They are intuitively laid out all in one place so that users with no specialist DSP knowledge can still use and configure the system easily. It also provides you with an extensive list of measurement parameters, as you see on the left side. Uh, it is a truly full-feature user interface. And as mentioned earlier, the MATLAB integration is very seamless in this software. So you can go to the MATLAB command uh, window built into the software interface. And whatever command you add here gets executed in real time as the OMA uh, makes the measurement. And that's a great way to customize the DSP chain, uh, import your own DSP algorithms, or modify the, um, the raw signals, or uh, add extra custom filters as you like it. it. It really gives you that flexibility to customize the uh, DSP happening uh, to this signal. 
Now, I'd like to talk about a specific application where uh, coherent test instruments are used. As the coherent signals are typically uh, single carrier, they can be used to uh, multiply the data rate yet again by multiplexing in wavelength. Now, in the dense wavelength division multiplexing, channels are placed very close together to increase spectral efficiency. The new schemes like FlexiGrid makes sure that uh, the channels are uh, ever closer uh, than before. And having channels so close now becomes a concern because it, it, it can produce uh, inter-symbol interference. In order to test for the effects of inter-symbol interference, you need a channel loading test setup which can emulate the presence of neighboring channels. And with a flexible channel loading test setup, you can also test for nonlinearity such as four wave mixing and cross wave modulation, which takes place when the WDM channels are highly loaded, resulting in high power. And as trying to modulate multiple wavelength channels individually using separate IQ transmitters and AWGs can be prohibitively expensive. Uh, a common practice in the industry is to use one transmitter and modulate multiple channels together so they mimic the spectral contents of the actual signal. These signals are then placed next to the reference channel of interest and a measurement is made on the reference channel uh, to see the effect the presence of the neighboring channel has. Such a setup can be configured using commercially available test instrumentation. Tunable lasers, VOAs, and EDFAs uh, from Quantify Photonics are available as PXI optical modules so that they can be all controlled from a single interface re remotely and you can easily automate them. IQ Transmitter has externally connectorized modulator input so that you can connect the multiplexed lasers and the ABC built into the transmitter will optimize for such signals um, very well. The OMA can be used to measure one channel at a time by tuning the local oscillator uh, to the uh, channel of interest and the bandwidth of the hardware or a digital filter, if you put one, uh, will filter out other channels automatically. So it's a very convenient setup to measure uh, such uh, multiplex signals. When you use one IQ transmitter to modulate multiplexed channels across the C-band wavelength range, uh, because of the wavelength dependence of the modulated bias point, uh, you will see a slight deviation of bias for uh, channels on the end uh, of the range. But as you can see from these diagrams, this deviation is very slight and it will not affect uh, you know, uh, the purpose of using it as loading channels. And you know, their spectral characteristics will be uh, similar, very similar to the reference channel. Here we see a measurement example uh, of a test for inter-symbol interference. For this test, we put two channel loading signals on either side of the reference channel, and by turning it on and off, we can see the impact it has on the reference channel. We can also adjust the channel spacing to control the amount of overlap you get between the channels to see, uh, again, its impact. This slide here shows you uh, the signal of the reference channel without neighboring channels. And this one shows the reference signal with two neighboring channels with 75 gigahertz spacing. On the spectral plot, you see the uh, wings from the neighboring channel. They do overlap, but not so much to uh, cause a significant impact on the constellation plot. But if you bring the channels closer with 70 gigahertz spacing, you see a bigger overlap between the channels and the impact of inter-symbol interference is now more visible on the constellation plots. If you're interested in the channel loading test and would like to learn more, 
please feel free to contact us directly as we are a system integrator who specialize in uh, putting together systems that uh, satisfy your specific requirements. So we've looked at the challenges involved with utilizing the coherent communications technology. Uh, thank you for your attendance today, and please feel free to submit your questions now. Thank you. Bye-bye.